Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Sendaidukai and in this video I summarize what's new with the 5.2 beta version of Bitwig. Then let's get started. On April 25, 2024, Bitwig released the 5.2 beta version and also introduced a few new devices. The first thing to mention is the new Compressor Plus. Like the other Plus devices at Bitwig, this is not a basic device, but one of the more complex devices with predefined properties and effects. Bitwig announces it as a 3-in-1 device. Bitwig announces it as a 3-in-1 device. It has three main modes, namely Standard, a normal standard compressor, Beyond, an upward and downward compressor, and Dual, which is described as smoothly moves through custom curves for bumping the signal below the threshold. It is nice to see that a numerical display for the gain reduction is included here, even if it has been mixed with another display. Furthermore, there is an auto timing function on board that influences attack, release and knee and still allows a little control. There are six different compressor character styles on board. Vanilla, smooth, over, glue, resist, smash, which may emulate different compressor models with their functionalities and reactions. And there is the multiband analysis where it was explicitly pointed out that this is not a multiband compression. As Bitwig unfortunately does not explain this any further, the community is currently guessing in the old tradition how this is meant. It is possible to provide four different bands with different ratios and attack and release timings, but it is not treated as a multiband compression. It remains to be hoped that Bitwig will provide more detailed information on this, otherwise I unfortunately once again see the danger that a great device is wasting massive potential because nobody knows about it. Then there are VCA voltage controlled amplifier flavors which offer different colorations with clear prism transistor saturate and then some multiband compression, overtones and distortion. And finally a few nice features such as the learn makeup gain which is used for input and output volume matching, the stereo distribution, how the compressor reacts to the right and the left channels and the corresponding presets to divide this between low and high frequencies. Then there are three very interesting new EQs, Sculpt, Focus and Tilt. Sculpt and Focus have predefined EQ ranges which are extremely helpful when searching for the right frequency. Sculpt is an EQ based on the classic Pultec EQP1 with simultaneous boosts and cuts of a frequency, which could be very helpful for kick drums, for example, but also for other applications. The Focus EQ is modeled after the Pultec MEQ5, which boosts the low and high frequencies and cuts the mid. These two EQs also offer different saturation modes with clean, no saturation at all, tube to add the warm saturation of a tube, transistor to add additional odd harmonics with a slight emphasis on the mid frequencies, and finally the tilt EQ, which does exactly what the name promises. It can be used to change the tilt, that is the balance or the weightening of the low or high frequencies, very conveniently. In addition, the weightening between a left and right channel or center and side can be set for all EQs. With over comes another distortion wave shaper clipper device with a multiband option and more color to the sound in even more variations. The chain device has also been expanded to include a learn wet gain function for automatic gain matching. In other words, to simplify input and output volume for an AB comparison. Perhaps a small thing, but incredibly helpful. The FX selector device has been given a fade in and fade out option to make the transitions between the effects a little smoother. The multi-node has been given a learn function with which chords can be easily defined and then recalled at the press of a key. 
The arpeggiator is now a little more precise when modulated or automated. With the sampler, the interaction between round robin and velocity crossfades now works perfectly. New modules have also been added to the grid. There are now two frequency splitters, crossover 2 and crossover 3, with which different frequency ranges can be processed differently. A simple all pass filter with different slope settings and freely selectable frequency ranges. A shift register that can be used to save and recall the last up to eight inputs. Another major topic is the term precision editing, which also aims to improve workflow in terms of working speed. There are now helpful shortcuts for time selection, which also has two different modes, namely object and time selection. The loop bar, cue marker and clips can now also be selected and moved using keyboard shortcuts. Beat detection has now been further refined and improved. Tempo fluctuations can now also be transferred to capture the groove of a beat and apply it to your own material in the entire project. The most important function, if errors occur or not, undo and redo have now also been extended to plugins. Bitwig has reprogrammed the entire display engine, so to speak the GUI, so that the GPU or graphic card is more involved, giving the CPU even more capacity for calculating sounds and effects. All of this is still beta and should be therefore be treated with caution. Most of all, I am still looking forward to the missing documentation. But for me personally, this is an absolutely great release because not only have great new devices been introduced, but many new and great improvements also been made to the workflow and working speed. What is your opinion? What do you find particularly great? What do you like the most? And which of the new things do you find the most interesting and would like to hear more about it? Let me know in the comments. So that's it again. My name is Odo Sendai Thank you for your time and your attention. And I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.